Alrighty, so we've all heard of Edelkron camera gear. It is amazing gear, don't get me wrong, but it's also pretty pricey. And I'm not knocking that, you do get what you pay for. However, I am wondering, is it possible to just save on cost by 3D printing my own? Today, I'm gonna find out. All right, so quick disclaimer, I am not gonna try and rip off Edelkron in any such way by making a cheap knockoff copy. A, I couldn't do that, I don't think I have the skills, and B, that is dishonest. What I have here is this, okay? It's hard to see because it is a matte black box that I'm trying to show you in a not very lit environment. But this here is the Edelkron Flex Tilt Head 3D. Now, Edelkron has this Flex Tilt Head in two versions. Version number one is the fully aluminium, fully constructed by Edelkron and just you buy it and use it straight out of the box. That is very expensive, I think it's $300, not sure, I'll have to put the price up here. This one, they provide you the CNC machined metal parts which could not be 3D printed because they just would not support the weight or the repetitive use of it. And then the bulk of it, you 3D print yourself. The beauty about this is that this was 308 RMB, it's about 32 quid in English money. And the 3D printed bulk of it, the, the file, the 3D printed, they just give you for free. And the actual printing, I'm not sure because I have never, I've never even looked into 3D printing yet. But I'm pretty sure that kind of the stuff they use for 3D printing, like it looks like wire that comes on a roll. Don't think that's very expensive. I think that's the what people, I'm pretty sure I've heard, is the beauty of 3D printing is it doesn't cost very much. Anyway, today I am going to find out, you know, in this video, even not today, I'm going to find out and I'm going to see is it worth doing this? Is it much cheaper? What is the price difference and what is the quality difference? I'm sure there must be a quality difference. There's no way aluminium and 3D printing could be as good quality or they would be the same price. But we're gonna have a look, we're gonna see, is it any good? Is it worth you doing this? Or is it just a complete waste of time? Anyway, let's get into it. So how do I go about 3D printing? Well, I've got two options. Option one, to go to a 3D print farm and get them to print it for me. Option two is to go and buy a 3D printer myself. So I bought a 3D printer. Alrighty, I have really got into the weeds with this 3D printing. I spent like the last couple of days just getting used to the printer by printing a whole bunch of stuff that was already on the included SD card and a bunch of stuff that I found on Maker World and Thingiverse. Right, so I have printed this, which is a, like a little knife thing for scraping the bed. And when you have prints that are stuck on there really hard, which isn't most of the time, I have printed this, which is a, goggles protector the lens protector for the goggles 3 because it doesn't one doesn't come included this is uh it's a little bit too big sony body caps air tag holder for the fx3 fx30 countless other scrapers this cool flick knife and of course a benchy this little ship which is supposed to be the test for the 3D printers because it includes lots of overhangs and tricky places like holes and other sort of difficult angles. Okay, so I feel confident enough now to just get right in there and print the flex tilt head and see if it comes out all right. I have bought some interesting filament. This is a bright orange PLA plus. I think this should look super cool when I print it out. When I just, if you see the program behind me here, this slicer program, the Bamboo Labs slicer program tells you because you need to, have, it suggests that you have an 80 to 100% infill for the strength. I'm probably gonna go, I might split straight in the middle and go 90%. It says it's gonna be about three hours and 40 minutes of printing. So fingers crossed, nothing gets jammed, everything prints okay. It's 180, maybe just under 200 grams of filament. There's a thousand on here, so should have plenty left over. Fingers crossed, everything goes well. I should have all the parts printed pretty soon. Let's just, just give it a try. Day two. Alrighty, so after four hours of printing, I think it was, yesterday afternoon slash evening, we got all the parts here. You can see they're not quite the color I wanted. I wanted like a more darky, but yet just as bright orange. But overall, with the 90% infill, these feel absolutely solid. 
Um, I guess now it's just time to get building. Bosh, here it is. Super nice. It looks super good quality. I'm actually really impressed with how this is, uh, how it's turned out. It, you know, comes out like this. I haven't actually tried it with a camera on it because I've just finished constructing it, but it feels pretty solid. The, the 3D printed parts came out wonderful. The metal, which they give you all the, the metal parts, make it feel super solid. It's got a decent weight to it. I am, um, slightly nervous about it does feel pretty good con like good quality construction but i'm still a little bit nervous about the top bit here because it's held together just by all the rest of the metal parts pushing it in so i might actually want to put some super glue in there just to hold this part at the end a little bit tighter together because if that was to come apart the thing holding the camera on would also maybe come off there maybe i'm completely overthinking it but i think it might be good just to do that in case I like the color of it, the color is fantastic. And the black, just like I predicted, looks really good. I would say, however, Edelkrone, you should make your instructions much more clear because the instruction booklet that came in that little pack was yeah, just a little bit confusing because it's in a completely different order to how the instruction video is. And there was a few things which I got completely wrong with the arms, some of them, have to be in a specific orientation because they have a square hole for the bolt to go in on that side. So I messed it up in the middle and then I messed it up at the bottom because I didn't realize you had to have them right around the right orientation for the bottom part. So I had several times of unscrewing those parts and putting it back on. But overall, not super hard once you've got the idea and it feels like a pretty solid product so far. Now just one last thing, let's go test it with an actual camera on there to see if it's any good. So here I have, it's set up on top of this fluid head on top of a tripod. And here I have what is not a super heavy setup, but it is heavy enough. It is my B-cam, the FX30, and the Seven Artisans Vision Cine Prime, which is a 50mm T1.05. It's, it's, it's a reasonable weight, it's not super heavy. Anyway, let's give this a go and see how it goes when it is on here. Just going to find the hole, so she said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it kind of stays like that, but if I wanted to, <laughs> if I wanted to put it further forwards, you can see, <laughs> it does not. Now, I think that that is just because these are not tight enough. So if I maybe just tighten these on each side. All right, just as I thought, a little bit of a tighten with the Allen key and bam, that's, a, that's pretty solid. I would feel comfortable leaving my camera on here and for it not to be falling off. That being said, I guarantee you that I, I have this big suspicion that now I've tightened these up, it affects the operation of it bending and folding back away. Yeah, so I think that the main problem with these 3D printed parts is that it's gonna be hard to get a balance between being strong enough to stay in position and hold a camera and being flexible enough to still pack itself away because at the minute I cannot pack this away. 
Right, so there you go. Is it possible to 3D print Edochrome gear for much cheaper? Yes, yes it is. I mean, I'm pretty happy with this. That looks pretty good. I like the color of it. It's, it's pretty decent. It's got a nice weight to it and I think it will work perfectly functionally well. Is it as good as the more expensive Edochrome, like the, the fully aluminum one? Absolutely not. Like this is super hard to get a balance right of the flexibility and the rigidity. Um, whereas I'm guessing the aluminium one, much, much easier to do that with. I could be completely wrong. I'm not gonna go and buy the expensive one to find out. That being said though, although it is a little annoying that you have to tighten up like, all six of the joints once you get it into place to be able to actually hold a reasonably, uh, I'd say a mediumly heavy camera, it's still gonna be good. I think if uh, maybe if I used it for an overhead shot, uh, I think it's perfectly great for doing that. Just takes a like 30 seconds more setup. What do you guys think anyway? Is this something that you've done? Is this something you'd like to do? Or is it something you just think is a complete waste of time and resources? Hit me up in the comments down below and uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, until next time guys, peace.